market. I am your host for today's live stream. Of course, my name is Connor, and let's get right into today's content. Crypto Empire morning domination is back. It is 8.45 a.m. right now, EST in the U.S. So hope you guys are getting your day started with Crypto Empire right now, and I hope you're starting your day off on the right foot. Now let's hop right into our overall market analysis, taking a look at CoinGecko. Not much has changed from the last time I did a live stream, which was give or take around 24 hours ago. Really nothing has changed at all. Market is slightly green, but overall we're still in choppy conditions and there's still a lot of uncertainty about the next move in the market. Of course, a lot of people are anticipating a pump to the upside and the way that price action is shaping up, it's more, it's looking more and more likely that we very well can get a pump to the upside. Um, but with that being said, we're not out of the woods just yet. I'm noticing Polkadot here with an interesting logo on CoinGecko. They have some kind of moving pink flame, which is interesting. I've never seen this before. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, everything is flat or slightly up. And if we take a look at BTC here on the four-hour time frame, Again, not much has changed from last night. We are starting to shape up for a bullish breakout, but we still need to clear the $66,500 level. And that is right here at our blue EMA. This is the 100 simple moving average on the four hour time frame. Unless this is flipped, well, then we're not going to get up here to 68 to 69K, which is our next level to get through. And once we get through this, 68.5, 69K level, we're right back at the all-time high territory, ready to break out and, and get through this. So we're taking it one step at a time here. Like I said, a lot of people are overly eager and they're overly eager for a breakout here and for all their altcoins, all, the, all their investments, all their holdings to pump. But the market's going to move when it wants to move. And like I've been saying, maximum pain for most people right now would just be choppy sideways conditions possibly bleeding out lower as well. That would be maximum pain to make people wait, say weeks or you know maybe one to two months for the next leg up in the market. So understand that it can take some time to kind of absorb this current price action we're having and for the bulls to take back control and for them to push you know Bitcoin to new all-time highs. There's no guarantee that it's going to happen this week, next week, the week after that. Just take it one step at a time. Now, for me personally, I'm heavily allocated to the market in spot positions like I have been from, say, September. Right, I'm heavily allocated already. So I'm perfectly fine if the market takes some time now to put it in its next leg up. If it wants to pump from here, that would be great. I'm already positioned. If, if it wants to go lower and if it wants to give us some lower prices, I'll look to simply add in at lower prices than we currently have. Whatever the market gives us next, I'm going to act on what it what it gives, right? Whatever hand they play, I'm going to play my hand based off of their move. And I'm already covered, right? I already have insurance basically being that, you know, I've been paying attention to this market and allocating my capital into it from, say, the lows, September, October. Uh, but nonetheless, if you're wondering what you should be doing, if, you, if you're not allocated right now, I mean, I would definitely be scaling into to, to altcoins building a solid core portfolio, and then looking at higher risk beta meme coins as well, particular, particularly on the base network, because that's where maximum opportunity is lying right now. Also, a lot of good opportunities on Solana. Now, let me catch up with our live chat over here. We got quite a few people already watching. Shout out to everybody in the live audience. Be sure to smash up that like button if you're just tuning in right now, or if you've been here from the start and you just haven't hit the like yet, go ahead right now and smash that like button. Shout out to the Silva Dalla. Shout out to Johnny 265X. We also got Black Sun. Black Sun says, What up, Connor? But he forgot the P. All good, Black Sun. I know what you mean. We got All Day Dre. We got Kazuya saying early today. Hope you're doing great, Connor. I'm not doing too bad, my man. Hope you're doing great as well. We got ZZEN saying, Yo, yo, Space Time Jim. TT Daramola saying, Good morning, Connor. What's going on, TT? Sander, good morning, Elvis. Everybody's here today. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. Sport Graham, Preston, Dennis Base Yoda saying, I think Boda is the next sleeper hit. And we also got Crypto Middle East and Africa. So, I mean, listen, I appreciate all of you guys being here. I can't really uh, get to all of these welcoming comments, but I see them all and I, I appreciate them all. Shout out to Ian M saying, hello, everyone. 
Now we got some comments about Base Yoda, and I mean, yeah, Base Yoda is doing very well. It made a new all-time high. I do believe it's pulling back right now. Let's take a look at Base Yoda and some of these uh, meme coin plays that uh, we're currently in. So let's wait for this to load up. All right, Base Yoda right now, six point seven three million dollar market cap. It did hit. It almost hit ten million last night which is very impressive and really it's just the start i think i mean again i've never seen such a strong community so we've all had plenty of time to get positioned into this don't ask me if it's a good time to, to enter into it you know i was down here for a few days spent a lot of time between two to three mil ample time for everybody to be up on this uh, but again it's one of the strongest communities that i've ever seen for a meme coin so i wouldn't be surprised to see it go ahead and continue in its current uptrend, right? Because it just put in a breakout after a pretty long consolidation, right? Having a slight retracement is completely normal. We want to see a higher low form and then it continue upwards. But yeah, base Yoda is looking very, very bullish. And especially, I mean, May the 4th is coming up. That, that's a potential narrative, Star Wars. We'll see if it has an effect on the price. But yeah, really clean branding, really clean website. These guys are doing everything right over at base Yoda. And you know, their holders are growing rapidly. If we look on deck screener, um, they're paying, this is community raised. They're paying for ads on deck screener over here. You can see on the right side of my screen, the base Yoda says ad here, community raised funds for this. So yeah, I mean, this is like a fully community driven project at this point. It's, it's very uh, amazing to see. So base Yoda is very bullish. Now, one meme that I have been in from the lows is Andy on blast. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about Andy on Blast in the past. That rhymed. Um, but anyways, Andy on Blast got into this at a $2.75 million market cap when it was down here in this basing period. That's why when you guys ask me about altcoin charts or meme coin charts, and I see it in a similar kind of pattern to something like Andy on Blast when I bought this, right? I'll tell you if it's in a good accumulation spot. I believe one yesterday was the wall street bets coin but it was on base and it was called something else but it had this kind of similar pattern where it listed pumped and then it went into a long accumulation right if the meme is good you want to buy that accumulation after the initial pump and that's what we did on andy on blast we got it at 2.75 it went up to a 50 mil market cap about a 17 18x gain it pulled all the way back down to 10 mil and now it's sitting at 16 mil right so this is still up say five to six x um, from entry price but yeah, with the blast airdrop coming up, it's going to be a like $100 million plus airdrop for, for blast. I am expecting a lot of that money to rotate into meme coins on blast. And Andy on blast is, in my opinion, you know, the top meme coin on the chain. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of capital roll into that. And it's a risk-free position over here, Andy on Blast at this point. You know, it went up 18x. Of course, I'm going to realize my initial investment and make it risk-free. That's what everybody should be doing on these meme coin plays, right? If you catch a 10x, 20x, and you don't realize your initial investment because you want to go for that next Pepe moonshot, you're an amateur and you haven't been doing this long. Um, you know, somebody who's traded meme coins for years, you know, the most important thing is to secure your initial so that you can't lose on the trade. Um, but yeah, I digress. Andy on Blast, I'm bullish on it. In terms of Blast meme coins, I mean, there's another one. There's the Pack coin, and then there's Blast Pepe, which this is actually the first meme on Blast, but it's really not doing good. Um, it's it's tanking, so I'm not sure. I do have a position in this, and it's down, but yes, it looks like people are exiting. But nonetheless, the catalyst for Blast is the airdrop coming in a few weeks now in May. All right, so if that catalyst, if that thesis, little fancy word that everybody's using nowadays, their thesis for meme coins, kind of annoying, but whatever, that's what these all these, all these people are saying, their thesis. The thesis for Blast is that they're going to have a huge airdrop and a lot of money is going to rotate into memes. So, yeah, I mean, I have these two positions. We'll see how they play out. One of them's already, you know, paid off massively. We'll see if the other one does. Uh, but yeah, we're taking risk, right? We're exposing ourselves to risk and... It doesn't always work out with Blast Pepe right now. It's not necessarily working out. But of course, the win on Andy on Blast covers all the losers, right? So that's just how we play the game. But yeah, Blast memes, we'll see if they pick up with the airdrop. It should be interesting. Speaking about some other airdrops. So Frentech. Frentech is the social finance application on the base network. 
And Frentech had a tweet on the 20th of April saying they're going to try something new. And they're basically looking like to, uh, to do a version two of their application. All right. And it's going to launch. When is it going to launch? On the 29th of April in seven days and one week. There's a lot of speculation that Frentech is going to do a massive airdrop. They said right here, we won't make you tweet anything to claim an airdrop. We've outgrown that phase in our lives. All right. So they are going to do an airdrop basically. And your points that you have in the Frentech app are most likely going to reflect how many tokens you get from that Frentech airdrop. Now, of course, if you've been subscribed to the channel here, you would have seen my Frentech airdrop video eight months ago. Get started on Frentech and get the Frentech airdrop. Right. So if anybody followed that along, followed along that video, uh, you're probably going to get a friend tech airdrop based off the amount of points that you have in your friend tech application. Now, when I first made this video, friend tech was relatively new. It was a lot easier to get points because the number of users on the platform was very low compared to where it is now. Right. So they gave out more points per user, even if you didn't do too much. If you, if you try to farm it now, it's, it's very tough, right? It's very tough to get a lot of points. I have around a thousand friend tech points, so we'll see what that gives me. And I got all those within like the first few weeks of me making the application and using it because there were such little amounts of people using friend tech when I first started covering it. Now it's very diluted. <clears throat> so again, the early word gets the, the early bird gets the worm. That's how crypto works. When you try something new and most people don't want to be bothered to say bridge to a new blockchain or set up their friend tech app, right? That's where the opportunity lies. The bar is set so low because most people are so brutally lazy. Most people are so lazy. They don't want to, you know, go after something that's new and bridge to a new chain and try something, right? They just don't want to put any effort in at all. They want to just suck up as much information as possible, as much value as possible, and just not put in any work and they want to be successful. That's not really how life works. Crypto is a very forgiving market in the sense where you can get away with being just a lazy sack of you know what. Uh, and still be successful because, I mean, in a bull market, everything pumps. But still, like as, as a human being, like how can you accept that, right? The, the bar, you're like, your personal standards should be higher than that, right? You should be better than that. Um, but yeah, like, everybody is so lazy and the bar is set so low to be successful in crypto. If you're willing to try new things early, experiment and go after things that most people are scared to go after. And friend tech now is the perfect example. So we'll see what kind of airdrop we get from friend tech. And this could kickstart a base meme coin giga season, a huge ba base meme coin season with the friend tech airdrop, depending on how big it is. It's, it's expected to be pretty big because they raised uh, quite a few, um, quite a big amount of money um, backed by things like paradigm investment firms. So yeah, we're expecting a pretty decent friend tech airdrop and that could kick off a huge base season. So what memes am I in on base? Well, you already know glasses are still on doge and glasses. I mean, this one, where's it at? 550k market cap in the middle of its zone again just one big accumulation here we're waiting for the breakout above 0 0.002 and we're expecting it to go on a run once it can finally break it break out above this level of course the cute cat is just warming up it's just getting you know just heating up right now and uh, it's just never going to stop right now at a 20 mil market cap 19.95 wait for this chart to load on the screen there we are so yeah, we're trying to get through a pretty obvious area of resistance on the 12 hour time frame on this. Let's put an orange line so everybody can see, right? This level, let's blow this up full screen. This level here, All right? This is acting as resistance. We broke out. Now we're just kind of retesting the breakout on QCAT candle. And I mean, after it flips this level, it's got these these highs from the, the pump that happened right after the listing, um, when it was still super early, right? This is normal for meme coins. They pump after launch, they go out into a little accumulation and they, if they're bullish, they're going to break out higher, right? So QCAT candle shaping up really, really well. Chart looks great. And there's no reason for me to be bearish on this, especially because it's a great meme. Now also QCAT candle. I mean, the team is very competent. Right, they're doing all the little small details. Um, they're listed on Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko. I'm not sure why Coin Gecko doesn't show on Dex Tools. I'm sure this will be updated. Uh, but if you click on their their contract on Base Scan, you know you can see they 
not not many meme coins go ahead and do this, right? They update all their details, their social profiles. And you also can see the value of the fully diluted market cap. And if you go to holders, you can see, you know, the value of how much was burnt. They burned 25% of the supply on the first day at a four mil market cap. So that was worth a million dollars then. It's now worth $6.5 million they burnt, right? And then um, I do believe that this second wallet here holding 4% is the team because they sent 25% uh, to the burn address from this wallet here, the second one. All right, so the two largest holders are basically the team and the burn address. So really bullish, really competent team. And uh, it's reflecting in the chart right now. And here's the CoinGecko page. We can click on it right from Basecan, QCAT Candle. All right, so this team's doing everything right. And I think it's going to be a leader on base. And then obviously there's Base Yoda which we already took a look at. And other than that, I mean, there's a few other memes on base. Obviously there's Brett, right? Brett at 677 million. It's the highest market cap meme on base by a huge margin. All right, so it's the it's the winning horse right now. It's the fastest horse currently. Interesting looking chart though. It is an interesting looking chart because this is the first time really that Brett has shown any weakness from its launch over here in late February, right? This thing went live on February 27th. It had some decent pullbacks on its rise higher, right? This pullback was 66%. You know, in a bull run, you see a 60% pullback. Usually that's optimal buying opportunity. Uh, let's see the current pullback on Brett. From low to high, you're looking at around 40% to that wick, 46% to there. Yeah, so a 40 to a 60% pullback, generally speaking, in a bullish trend is a good le uh, level to buy. But yeah, this is the first time that Brett has shown any weakness. You know, as you can see, you can draw multiple trend lines. I have this one trend line drawn from the first initial rise up. If you want to say draw one from these levels, you can go ahead and draw it like this. But no matter how you draw your trend lines, they all broke. They all broke on the daily time frame. So that's why I'm saying it's looking weak because objectively it's breaking daily trend lines. And that's that's something we should be paying attention to. But, you know, a few huge buys can come into Brett and it can go right back up and start making new highs easily. So, yeah, this is like the, the leading horse. It's the number one meme right now on the chain. Of course, it's a competitive market. So that can easily change with a competitor outpacing it. But if all goes well, you know, Brett should go to billions in market cap. And it's the closest one there. It only needs 323 million more dollars in market cap to reach that 1 billion level. And then who knows, it could hit escape velocity. So yeah, Brett's a good gauge on kind of the overall health of, of base meme coins being it's the number one. And also Toshi, Brian Armstrong's cat, right now at a $188 million market cap now. There's a lot of Toshi whales that are really, really bullet. Just like Brett whales are saying Brett's going to go to billions. The Toshi community, the Toshi whales, they all say that Toshi is going to go to billions. All right. Obviously, these people are biased. They're trying to hype up their own community in their own bags. That's just the market we're in now in the meme coin space. But yeah, Toshi and Brett are your two leaders on the chain. And they're definitely worth paying attention to. If you want to have a lower kind of risk, even though meme coins are inherently extremely high risk, I would say that Toshi and Brett are lower risk than, say, some of my active plays. But I think my plays will produce bigger returns. So, you know, with more risk comes more reward. Keep that in mind. There's a lot of interesting projects out there on base. Um, we've seen Geo Bowden in terms of political memes. We have seen Geo Bowden do extremely well. I want to check up on where this is at right now. 640 mil is it? $450 million market cap for Geo Bowden. Now these kind of really bad, badly drawn sketches of say prominent figures do really well. The website is unavailable for Geo Bowden right now. That's interesting. But anyways, th these really bad looking characters, right? They do really well as memes because they're they're pretty funny and they're pretty accurate, right? Biden at this point, I mean, the guy is, <laughs> I 
The guy can't function. So it's a very accurate meme. That's why it's doing so well. It's actually funny. But there is one on base called Brian, B-R-I-U-N. And it's kind of like a redacted version of Brian Armstrong. And this one is at 5.9 mil. So yeah, I mean, just because these stupid, like badly drawn character memes are doing well, maybe Brian Armstrong can make a comeback. It's basically floored out. I haven't bought this yet, but I'm possibly considering it. Um, it's floored out right now, and this level has held all the previous times it's been here. So, you know, if there's ever a time to take an interest in a project, it's at the bottom like like this is. And this obviously would be bullish because Brian Armstrong is the CEO of Coinbase, and it's kind of like a play on Brian Armstrong. The other one is Thank You Base God, TYBG, which is higher than Brian. This is at 16 mil. But I do believe that this one's been looking quite weak. Yeah, this one, this one sold off really hard. It looks like a lot of people exited from Thank You Base God. And it's just in this dead consolidation now after a lot of whales have clearly sold this to tank the price down this low. So yeah, in terms of like a Brian Armstrong tribute, these two memes, Brian and TYBG Base God. They would be the closest two to that. So they're worth keeping an eye on. And, you know, if, if you do your own research and you think they're good, then, you know, they possibly could be good. But yeah, base memes like friend tech airdrop coming next week and then a base airdrop as well. It could really send the network, the base network into a complete frenzy. So I think not having any base meme coin exposure is riskier than having base meme coin exposure because we're going to see a huge house money effect of people playing around with their airdrop money from friend tech from the base token and they're going to be gambling on meme coins so that's something worth considering and that's my thesis such a stupid word um that's my thesis for base meme coins got to find a synonym for that hit the thesaurus after this live stream uh but one more while we're on the subject is key cat keyboard cat now look i said yesterday i think that q cat candle is better than keyboard cat as a meme Right. I think the cat just warming up is better than the cat has a keyboard. Um, I think it sounds, it's just a better meme overall, but this candle, right? From an objective TA perspective, this, this candlestick on the 12 hour, this bullish hammer, um, this is a bottom, bottom technical signal. All right. So this chart's not looking too bad for a possible breakout to the upside. Keep an eye on it. I haven't bought any, but I mean, these candlesticks are telling us a story here, especially this bullish hammer. So yeah, that's my base meme coin kind of general market update. Hope you guys enjoyed that little segment of the stream, but we have a lot more content to cover today. So hold your horses. We're just getting started. Preston says the Boda community worships you. Uh, that's good to know. I'm glad that, you know, I was able to discover Boda relatively early and, you know, help, help get the project some attention and it just organically blossomed to something that I've never seen before from there, right? A huge, huge community takeover. So I, uh, I'm right there with the Boda community. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for all of your support. Shout out to Armzilla saying, good morning. What's up, Armzilla? Sanders saying, CCC, baby. Yes, sir. Crypto Mike. What's up, Crypto Mike saying, Coinye. Yeah, that's another base meme that's getting some attention. Apparently, the, the Saudis are bidding Coinye. Right, you got some uh, royal families buying this one up, huh? Let's take a look at where this is at. Coinye, it's 17 mil. So this is another base meme. A homage to Kanye West. And it's not looking horrible, right? It had a really parabolic run at the start. Like this, this hit escape velocity very quickly. I mean, what did this do in terms of performance? This did approximately a 30, yeah, about a 30, 35 X from the bottom, bottom, but it looks like there was a few days to buy the super low. Um, I had some friends who got into this one super low. I didn't get into it though, but you know, it, it had its crazy 30 X pump. Now it's coming and forming a base down here at this 15 to 20 mil market cap range. So you want to see it essentially hold this line at point or 1.206 cents 
Um, if you can get it closer to this, that would be a better entry, of course. But yeah, it doesn't look bad, right? It's basing. It's in consolidation after a huge pump and then a bit of a sell-off. Now you consolidate. You find some kind of equilibrium between buyers and sellers, and then hopefully the buyers outpace the sellers and it starts to pump again. But yeah, this chart doesn't look bad. And being that Kanye is, he is my favorite rapper, right? Shout out to Kanye. What a legend. Um, it's a good coin, good meme coin. Kanye West and his fish sticks. So yeah, it's a good, that's a good meme, Crypto Mike. Tar looks pretty decent too. We got Smoker Session saying that the Boda family is here. Good to have you guys here. Boda about to go turbo on May the 4th. Hope so. <clears throat> Bullish on Parade says, yo, my dude, thanks for taking the time to stream today. Have a look at ICNX. All right, we'll take this question. And no problem about the stream, by the way. My pleasure. Hope you guys get something out of it. Now, ICNX, I got asked about this last week on a stream. And it was a racing racing game, basically. And if I remember correctly, I want to see this chart. But if I remember correctly, last week when I looked at it on stream, it was like a 1.5, 1.6 mil market cap. And now it's 2.4. Looks like it hit you know, 2.5 to 3 mil. I wonder what caused this particular racing game to start to move because gaming overall really isn't doing much. So there must be some kind of catalyst for this to start pumping. I mean, the charts, <laughs> the charts in a healthy uptrend right now. Right. Clearly, there is a lot of buyers and not too many sellers for it to be pumping the way it's selling or pumping the way it is. Sorry, my words mixed up there. 75 cents is your kind of major point of control. You want to see 75 cent hold. And if you're looking for an entry, try and get it as close to, say, 75, 80 cents as possible. I just like working off the round psychological numbers, 75 cent, $1, 25 cents, et cetera, 50 cents. You get the point. Let's see, the future of esports racing. Icon X World brings the complete, the compete and earn concept to sim racing games through the ICNX token. Graphics look clean, cars look good, and I don't know how this gameplay is. Has anybody played this game? Is it good? Because I mean, that's a huge factor determining if something is going to do well. If the game's actually good and playable and people enjoy it. Let's check out crypto rank and see if there's any vesting so we can find some more information on this. It is play to earn. That's good. Straight up play to earn. Crazy high FTV. Next unlock in 16 days. 2% of the supply, you know, which at the current market rate is 50 grand in value and tokens. So they did do a raise. They did a raise at 7.5 cents. So those pre-sale investors are up huge. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a low market cap project. I mean, it looks like there's a ton of dilution set to hit the market. Could be good. I don't know. I need to see like the gameplay. I need to do some more research. I can't look at everything on the live stream itself, but yeah, it looks somewhat okay. I'm just curious what caused this pump because you know gaming coins are pumping like this. So granted, it's very low market cap and low liquidity. So if you know just a few big people started to buy in, that's gonna cause it to pump like that. But yeah, interesting project. I need to look into it more. Moshin Ashraf says, hi, Connor. Nice to see you. We got Jazzy as well saying, good to see you, my man. What's up, Jazzy? We got Kylo the dog saying, yo, my G. What's up, Kylo? Dre says, read the ebook. And yeah, Dre's right about that. Everybody should read the ebook on Gumroad, cryptoempireco.gumroad.com. Link is in the description down below for the free ebook. A lot of good information in there. Now, what I want to shift your attention to today is some interesting news. Some current events happening in the crypto market. Let's get a good laugh together, guys. Let's get a real good laugh. So 
there's Leia Helpern. And I mean, she's been making crypto content for multiple cycles at this point. Um, you know, doing her thing. But I, I never really cared about what she was doing. She's a hustler. She works hard. She's a little hus hustler too, or she will hustle you. <laughs> Um, she loves taking money from simps power, power to her for doing that. Anyways, yesterday, April 21st, she did a sit down with the Kusamarian. Now, why is this? Why am I talking about this? So she says, talking about the crypto bull run, Bitcoin, having content creation and dot. Well, you guys know my take on Polkadot at this point. It's a dead project. It's a complete failure. Their management is horrible. They suck. They do everything wrong. It's basically a money funnel to the top of their corporate system. Polkadot's market cap is currently $10 billion. It is number 16 in the overall market cap. And I remember in 2020, this was like a top five, top 10 project. It's just slowly losing market share from the top. Just slowly keep, keeps on losing market share, keeps on losing market share. There's obviously a lot better investments than Polkadot. If you can't see that at this point, I don't know what to tell you, right? If you look at 90% of my altcoins that I've picked from late last year, they've 90% of them have outperformed Polkadot by huge multiples, like 10x multiples. Polkadot is not worth holding. They do a lot of sketchy stuff as well. And in my opinion, I'm just going to call it out. In my opinion, let me get this up again. She was definitely paid to, to do this interview with this guy. They were definitely, this was definitely a paid interview. The reason I say that, so this channel here, the Kusamarian, 9.17K subscribers. Look at this guy's videos. It looks like he's starting to get some views now recently. Say four days ago, 67K views. Um, but overall... It, it does these have to be boosted i don't know because <laughs> look they went from say what 690 views 1k views 858 views and then it gets 144k it, it gets 218k like i don't know man i'm suspicious of this even more reasons for me to be suspicious well uh this is their twitter account long story short polka dot has governance proposals like uh, proof of stake coins, they they vote on governance proposals, right? A proof of work coin, the miners will will vote. Proof of stake, you know, the people delegating can vote on the future of the network. Well, what Polkadot does is they allow anybody, it's an open governance. So anybody can submit a proposal. And then if you have staked Polkadot, you can vote to pass the proposal or say no and deny it. So the whales who have most Polkadot tokens control the outcome of most of these proposals. Now, this dude, the Kusamarian, this was January of 2023. He says he'd like to open a discussion. Six months maintenance of the Kusamarian, a Polkadot-centric media brand. We are a platform open with the stories of builders, token holders, uh, spoken and shared. So anyways, he's asking all this stuff he's going to do. Due to the efficiency gains, more consumable episodes and budget tightening, we'll be able to offer the same service over the next six months. Um, total budget currently stands at $286,000, 286K for 194 plus pieces of content, project maintenance, uh, etc. So he asked for $246,000 to make 194 pieces of content. It got passed in January 2023. Then a few months later, uh, when was this one? In July of 2023, so five, six months after this one, he goes ahead and he requests in another proposal, 59,203 polka dot. Let's just see how much that's worth. Let's, let's just take a little look on, on how much that's worth. 59,203 polka dot, $440,000. So he got 286K in January. Five months later, he gets 440K. He's gotten over half a million dollars just from these two proposals in January last year and July last year. He's done multiple more. Do you understand why I say that uh, Polkadot is a, fun, a money, money funneling 
scheme, scam, just preying off of retail investors that are gullible and naive to the fact that Polkadot just sucks. Nobody uses it. Barely anybody's building on it at this point. No new project wants to launch on Polkadot because it's a dead chain and they won't get any momentum. But here you have this random content creator who's obviously in cahoots with big Polkadot whales and developers on Polkadot that hold a ton of their tokens, just getting $600,000 off of two governance proposals. And there's been multiple more this year. He's gotten millions of dollars at this point to make these videos that for some reason, only 700 people decide to watch them. And then the next one, you know, 200,000, 40,000 people decide to watch it, right? It, it, Polkadot is, this is what I, when I say nowadays that I've been in this industry for a while and I see what goes on and I see all the BS, this is what I'm talking about. It's stuff like this. To the untrained eye, you won't be able to see this. But to somebody that actually understands what's going on, it's so obvious. So yeah, I mean, that's why I say you have to be super careful about who you listen to. Most people will just lead you to the slaughterhouse and they'll watch watch you literally just get slaughtered. And this is a perfect example. Imagine watching this guy taking him seriously and buying Polkadot because you think it's a good investment off of this content scheme that he got paid millions of dollars to do. It's literally the biggest complete sham I've ever seen or one of the biggest shams I've ever seen. It's one of the biggest jokes out there. And I mean, just, <laughs> I'm telling you this so you know to avoid stuff like this, right? I'm not, I am hating on them, but it, it's... <laughs> It's obvious why it's it's wrong what they're doing to an extent. If we're talking morals here, it's it's really wrong. But crypto obviously doesn't care about morals too much. This market's a joke. Anyways, you guys get my point. Avoid stuff like this. All right, I would suggest blocking these people. They're complete trash and they offer no good value, no good takes on anything. They're useless. They literally are just leading retail to the slaughterhouse. So be careful out there. Polkadot sucks. Kusamarian hanging you guys out to dry, taking your money basically, because all this money is com coming from the Polkadot treasury. They obviously raised a ton of money from VCs, but you know they're sitting on a ton of DOT tokens. They sell those DOT tokens. Who are they selling into? Retail buying pressure, right? At the end of the day, the, the, the people at the bottom of the totem pole retail, those are the ones getting used and abused here. So yeah, anyways, we're going to move on from this segment of the stream, but I thought I would share this with you guys today because it's important that you have this education and you know what goes on, All right? This Trump took 286K in this one proposal in January, 440K in this proposal. I'm not sure how many more he's done from July last year, but I know there's been a couple. He's taken millions of dollars for the subpar content, three minute videos at a time. Um, bots views on them. You know, why is this, why is this one getting 964 views and then this one getting 33K and it just doesn't make any sense. So anyways, um, a lot of shady stuff going on in this industry. Be careful out there. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you follow uh, because they might just lead you to the slaughterhouse and watch you get slaughtered. Now, some other current events. So obviously, we have the presidential election coming up November this year. We'll see how that fares for the market. The politicians want the market to pump with the election coming up, right? Because they don't want to lose votes if they say they're bearish on crypto or they're anti-crypto. So they're just going with it at this point. But RFK Jr. saying he's going to put the entire U.S. budget on the blockchain. Every American can look at every budget item in the entire budget anytime they want, 24 hours a day. We're going to have 300 million eyeballs on the budget. Interesting take. And I mean, Something like this needs to happen at this point because just like Polkadot, right? The, the U.S. government's obviously up to some shady business. I digress though. I don't want to, uh, can't say too much live on YouTube. But anyways, yeah, interesting interesting stuff here at RFK Jr. I doubt he's going to win the election, but we'll see what happens. It's not over until the fat lady sings as they do say. One more current event news article before we move on to kind of a more open Q&A and altcoin session is... Bitcoin runes. Bitcoin runes just went live with the Bitcoin having, and it's causing an insane amount of network congestion. We have this article here from CoinDesk saying that the Bitcoin miners are reaping windfall. If you don't know what windfall means, it's a large sum of money very quickly as runes debut, sending transaction fees to record highs. The Bitcoin halving was supposed to dramatically chop revenue of Bitcoin mining companies. Instead, the simultaneous launch of the Runes protocol has ignited a flurry of activity on the oldest and largest blockchain, driving up the fees. And of course, the fees get paid out to the miners. 
So like I said yesterday, right, and runes are not necessarily an area of focus for me. I haven't been paying too much attention to them. The Bitcoin blockchain can hardly handle ordinals and BRC20s, and now you introduce runes. It really can't handle all the, the volume and congestion. Um, it, it can't even just send money to another address without paying an exorbitant amount in fees to, to send a simple transaction. So we'll see what happens here with runes, but I'm still kind of, I don't know. I'm doing quite well with other areas of focus in the market, altcoins, meme coins. I don't feel like I'm going to divert my attention to runes to try and catch catch wins there. I, I feel like I don't have to. because There's so many bullish catalysts for, for base, for blast, huge airdrops. There's going to be so much money coming into these ecosystems. Um, but yeah, interesting what's happening here with the Bitcoin network. Fees are at all-time high levels because of runes. It's really slow. It's really congested. The fees are really high. We'll see how everything turns out. <laughs> I was about to tweet a polka dot assembly. We don't want to do that. Anyway, yeah, that's our little current events section for today. Uh, polka dot avoid at all costs, in my opinion. If you want to make money this cycle, of course. If you want to lose money, you can go into polka dot. We got ZZ Zen saying, evening from Australia. What's going on, ZZ? We got a $10 super chat from Kylo the dog. Kylo saying, this will be a legendary coin. You're a real one. Kylo, I assume you were talking about Boda. And yeah, I mean, it's already a legendary coin, what it's done. But it's looking like it's just getting started. We want to see a higher low form. We want to see a higher low form. And, you know, go ahead and continue the uptrend. Just put in a massive breakout. So there's obviously going to be some profit taking after a huge move. You know, once the selling pressure eases up, I expect this thing to go on its next leg higher. Preston Rhodes says that the Boda community doesn't shill their coin. They shill your channel. That's pretty funny. Kylo is fighting for it. He's saying they're going to surpass everything else on base. I love to see it. Be sure to smash that like button, guys, if you're enjoying the live stream so far. ZZ Zen asking about Gummy, Crypto Banter's new meme coin. I haven't really checked up on this one. Let's take a look. Gummy on Solana, one day old. Trending number two in the hot pairs. So it's at the forefront of everybody's attention right now. All right, so this is what a successful launch looks like. 184 mil market cap. Now, I'm pretty sure he said everything's going to the community, but then he took like 20% for marketing. Probably going to pay off a bunch of influencers. I haven't gotten an email though. What's up, Ren? Why haven't you emailed me? To shill your stupid coin. I wouldn't take it anyway, but um, still, what's up with that? Why, why no email, Ren? What's going on? Uh, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. This is a, this is a successful launch. Now, market cap 184 mil, liquidity 3.5 mil. It's decent. It's not great, but it's decent. And I'm pretty sure they are using uh, market maker bots, just like Katamoto. So, anyways, people made money on this. Can't hate. Right. If you bought the pre-sale or you grinded the airdrop to get the tokens early, you know, the tokens up, people have made money. That's what everybody's here for. So congrats if you guys made money on, on gummy, but I am, I have no plans to buy it personally, but the launch was obviously successful. Look at the chart. Now Katamoto, Another meme I am in from Tencent and their launch pad. So, I mean, this one still just sideways, slightly up from launch price, but it hasn't done anything. But overall, I mean, the structure, it's basing. Basing market structure. The volume is so high because they have market maker bots. This is 38 million in volume. What, is, what was Gummy's 24 hour volume? 
38 mil. So they're using market maker bots 100%, just like Hatamoto. Which is fine, right? It's a tool anybody can use in the market. But you got to understand that's making them significant money as well. But yeah, we'll see what happens with Katamoto. We'll see what happens with Gummy. We'll see what happens with all these meme coins. We're literally degenerate gambling on these things. We can say all these fancy words like, oh, we have a thesis. We have all this. We're gambling. Be okay with that. Understand you can lose. Understand you can win big. You can lose big. Welcome to the casino. Speaking of the casino, just reminded me of Ponky. Ponky team doing big things. Eighty-four mil market cap right now. I mean, Ponky's social media is it should be studied by every single meme coin team out there because they're doing a master class on how to get attention for a, a meme coin. Their videos, their graphics, everything just. I mean, they're doing everything right. This video I watched last night, pretty funny. Anyways, watch it on your own time. It was the origin story of how Ponky was born. Basically, everybody went on a gambling frenzy, and then uh, Ponky was summoned from a meteor. <laughs> That's how Ponky was was born in the first place, from a casino frenzy. But yeah, I like this I like this uh, Solana meme coin. Ponky is the degenerate gambling monkey on Solana. He doesn't get along with just anyone, but he does have a lot of friends and he gets angry sometimes, but deep down, he's a good monkey. One of the funniest memes out there with the best content. So yeah, Ponky's definitely one to consider. I think he can go to a billion dollar market cap and it's also just getting millions of views on Instagram and TikTok and gaining so many followers very quick. So it does look like it has a very bright future ahead. And you're buying the the highs right now, but you know sometimes it pays off buying the highs. If you see my sketch here, you know this is just kind of what I'm seeing. If this plays out, you know you can see a run up here to the three point six one eight extension at sixty cents. We'll see though. But yeah, Ponky's a good meme on Solana. Uh, Kylo flags, CCC flags are looking great and it's literally just warming up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really bullish on CCC. No doubt about that. Just warming up. Bets on base. That was the one bets on base I was talking about earlier. Dre says, when will people ditch Andy on ERC20 and get with the real Andy on blast? Dre, I don't think they're going to ditch it, man. Which is fine. Let them. They're they're making money over there. I mean, we're making money on Blast, right? We can't complain. We're up like four or five X even from our entry. I mean, we were up 18X at one point. Now the Andy on ETH people, if they heard me say that I'm up, you know, six X, they'd probably be seething. Um, but whatever. The only reason that this one's doing well. Is it it's, has just major pushing from because Bitcoin max and power to him. He's spearheading the movement and putting a lot of his personal energy into this project and seeing it succeed. Um, but will this have a Pepe type run and go to billions? I don't know. I'm somewhat of a skeptic, but I know there's people just so bullish on this. I just see constant bull posting all day. So they have the community. They have the centralized exchange listings. And um yeah, I don't think people are going to abandon it. So, I mean, I, I, I am more bullish than bearish on this thing going up just because of those factors I mentioned. It has a lot of good things going for it. And people are making money, so you, you can't really hate. You can't really hate on it. All right? If it was like Polkadot and everybody was losing money, it would be a different story. But, you know, you have general average retail market participants doing well with Andy on ETH. So it's fair game. It's a free market. Anybody can buy and sell any asset whenever they want. And if they want to buy and sell and trade Andy on ETH, let them. We just got a Kylo. I'm sorry I missed your super chat earlier, man. In um in Streamlabs, it doesn't show up. It doesn't pop up on my screen like it does in the YouTube studio streaming dashboard. 
So I apologize, but thank you for the $100 super chat. Kyla says, just want to say again, man, you're a real one. I'm putting on a lot of cool, motivated, good people. I've been in the communities. I'm involved in to you, even just with one episode, they were hooked. Keep doing you. And we all appreciate you. Kylo, you're a legend, bro. $100 super chat. Huge, man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. The Boda army is here. <laughs> base night memer saying Boda takeover. Niccolo saying Boda on base. The crypto krill saying LFG. Let's go Boda. Yeah, the Boda army is here and they're making a ton of noise. Again, we're just looking for a higher low to be printed on Boda here in our next leg higher. Healthy consolidation after a huge pump. Firefight. XWAT pre-sale in a few hours. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not going to buy into that. Kyla says, been sharing wealth with others. Since doing this, my mental and financial health has taken off. Yeah. That's why I'm, you know, donating to, donating to charities is very popular because you know, you're giving to um, people that actually need the money and doing a good thing. Yeah, Kylo, you're a legend. Andy on base, nah, fam. <laughs> That's the third Andy we'll bring up this stream. And if there's any real Andy, in my opinion, it's the one on Blast, the yellow character in the yellow blockchain. Andy on ETH is leading right now. And I mean, Andy on base is just a derivative riding the coattails on, on the main ones. I know it already had a really good run. It went from a few million to 20 mil. At this point, though, there's it's too diluted. There's too many Andys out there. And to say the one on base is going to be the one to take over, I don't know about that, man. But I wish you luck, brother. I hope it does well for you. Uh, Jazzy says, good to see you. Thoughts on Aerodrome. Yeah, so that's the base DeFi play. And I'm pretty sure they're, they are on Optimism too because – or was that Velodrome on Optimism? Yeah, this is the same thing, man. They just named it different. <laughs> same team for sure. But yeah, this has 135 mil market cap. This is 700 mil market cap. Wow. The market cap's kind of too high for my liking. Let's take a look at the chart. Here we go. Blow this up full screen. So if we go back in time, this thing launched the 15th of November, 2023. Three cents. And I mean, it's had really bullish price action ever since its launch. It launched at four cents. It went to two cents. Now it's at a dollar sixty-seven. Look, this... Yeah, like I said, I believe it was last week and last week's live stream, right? A lot of these charts look ridiculous. This thing already did 100x. It went from two cents to two dollars and thirty cents. My thoughts on this is, you know, it's a, it's the most used DeFi project on base, but in terms of an investment, I'm pretty sure this is just a governance token, and it's already gone 100x. I wouldn't buy a chart that's pumped like this, personally. But that's not to say it can't give you another, I don't know, three, five X from here in this bull run. But yeah, it already had a crazy good run. So I would just look for something that hasn't done a crazy huge run. Ozzy says, can you look at the Velo chart, huge breakout? Yes, we can look at Velo. Big move happening. 
So, I mean, I was covering this project quite a bit last year. I held some. I don't think I, I sold it. I definitely sold it. I don't hold it anymore. But I, I should have held it. It's all right, though. Whatever. I mean, it's not like I haven't made gains elsewhere. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure I first bought this, like, yeah, I remember this. I remember this pump. I think I took interest in it after this first pump in early 2023. And then a retrace back down to the bottom. And um, I think I sold it when I reorganized my entire portfolio in September last year. So I, I did sell the bottom for other coins. And I would be up almost a 10x, but that's all right. It's not like I haven't made 10x's elsewhere. But yeah, really impressive move from Velo. This is supposed to be the XRP of Asia. And it is officially broken out from its bear market accumulation range. The top of that was 1.5 cents. The bottom of that was at 0 0.001 cents. And yeah, it, it, we're in a bull market, folks. Right? This is an altcoin coming back from the dead. Should have a lot higher to go. Dre says, you can check the price of Frentech points on Wales Market. Um, maybe. Uh, I can't click on that link on Restream, Dre, unfortunately. It just says show or hide your comment. Crypto Mike asking about Mochi. So this is Brian Armstrong's other cat on base. He's got Toshi and he's got Mochi. He's got two cats. Now, I believe that Mochi is like building a blockchain game, something like that. They're trying to add some, some bullish catalysts. 35 mil market cap compared to Toshi at 188 mil, so significantly lower. And again, chart is showing weakness, of course, in a meme coin. That could change very quickly with some big orders coming through. But no matter how you spin it on the daily time frame, this is broken some levels, some important levels. So yeah, it needs to reclaim this orange line. If it doesn't reclaim this orange line, you're looking for more downside to this orange line. Which would give a much better entry if you're bullish on this and that's 40% lower. So Toshi is definitely the leader, but this is a good beta play. Because if Toshi does go to millions or billions in market cap, then Mochi as Brian Armstrong's other cat should go to at least hundreds of millions. So. Yeah, it looks it looks decent, but chart somewhat worrisome right now. Maybe it has a little more downside, but who knows? If we get some huge airdrops on base, that could change quickly. Kylo the dog says he's changing his life. I feel the purpose. Help all and Connor was the catalyst. I mean, that those are just some big words, Kylo. So I really appreciate you saying all this, man. Thank you. And I'm glad that you know you're able to to do some some good stuff on your own out there with the gains you're making. So shout out to you, I appreciate it, man. Nick Marks with the 199 super chat bets on base hired Brett's marketing team. Chart question mark. Did they hire Brett's marketing team? Is that confirmed? Let's wait for this to load. I'll give my take on statements like that in a second. Uh, why is this taking so long to load, guys? What's going on? Why you do that? Bets on base. Um, 
I'm I'm gonna I'm very unsatisfied with my computer right now, taking so long to load. Anyways, here's your chart bets on base. It's the same exact chart we were looking at on last night's live stream, but it is peaking up for a bullish breakout. And like I said in last night's stream, if there was ever a time to buy it. You know, it's in this kind of current consolidation range. I haven't bought this myself, but you know, you guys are sending me super chats and asking me to look at it. So I'll, I'll take a look at it for sure. You're about to flip your 21 12 hour EMA. That's very bullish. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's perking up for a breakout here out of this bottom accumulation. So I wish all bets on base holders great fortunes. And I hope you guys get an epic pump. But yeah, like uh, it looks like it, it wants to go. So we'll see how it plays out. And here's Brad. Brad gave me a $50 super chat about uh, bets on, on base yesterday saying, uh, morning, bets had a little mini pump. Yeah, I see that. I see that, Brad. It's looking pretty decent, man. It's looking it's looking like it's perking up for a nice breakout. So can't deny that. Dabba says, yo, Connor, how are you? Price target for render. I'm good, bro. How are you? Now, render. So it's trying to break through our supply level here. This is the origin of the breakdown, right? This is where price broke down to, you know, sub seven bucks. This is the supply zone and renders trying to perk through it. If it can perk through it, it does need to make a higher high past 1039. Um, but anyways, your, your question is my price prediction for render. Current market cap for render is 3.6 billion. From this point on, my price prediction is a 4x to a 7x. A 4x to a 7x. Now, I have my calculator open, but I'm only sharing my, my window, so you can't see my calculator. But I'm just going to do some math. So current price is $9.32. I mean, my average entry was around $1.50. So I'm up 6.21x right now. If it does another 4x, you know, it would be a 25x total, 24.8. I would be happy with that on a high market cap coin. It already went 100x last cycle. It's very rare where you'll see an altcoin do great returns in price multiple cycles. Render is one of those rare coins where it did really well when it launched last cycle. And, um, you know, here it is, it, it crashed back down to sub $1, you know, putting on an amazing run again. So it's rare that we'll see all coins have this multi-cycle performance and render is one of them. And, uh, you know, who's been bullish on render from, from around a dollar below two crypto empire. So, yeah, I mean, that's my price prediction from current price, maybe a four X to a seven X. Boda Army is so strong in here. Nick Marks with another super chat asking about that uh, bets on base chart. I appreciate it, Nick, and I hope you enjoyed my analysis. Boda versus Brett. I mean, I got to go with the underdog, obviously, Boda. I'm an underdog type of guy. I always root for the underdog. Brett 2.0 community takeover. Ah, these 2.0 coins, man. Like, I'm not really a big fan of them. I know Pepe 2.0 did well for a short amount of time, and then it crashed and burned. Brett 2. Let's see what happens. Brett 2. One day ago. Here's Brett 2.0. <laughs> Such a joke. <laughs> uh, no, this can't be it. This looks like a rug pull. $8,000 market cap. Anyways, I'm not a huge fan of community. Uh, I like community takeovers, but like 2.0 coins, they're just derivatives of the main thing. They're trying to ride off the coattails of the main thing. And 
I don't know. That's not my cup of tea. Brett 3.0. That's funny. Bets will get to where Brett is and beyond. I wish you luck with that. Thoughts on Suey say new coins. Austin Craig Lanzi, my man. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, thoughts on Suey say new coins. I think those ecosystems will do well. These projects that you mentioned, Sui and Say, they raised a lot of money from venture capitalists. So these venture capitalists have money on the line. They have skin in the game and they will want to pump these ecosystems so that they can cash out in large profits. So yeah, Sui to 10 bucks, I think is very doable. Current price is what, 150? 141, 1.8 billion dollar market cap yeah i think sui can go to 10 i think say as well it already had a great run um late last year but this is one of the better mid caps on the market it's a new coin uh you know layer one network a lot of good things going for it heavily vc back they're going to want to pump it same market cap as sui 1.8 uh, billion so yeah you know this one can go say five to seven dollars i want to be surprised I think it, it can give you some X's and um, just make sure you sell at the right time or you will be used as venture capitalist exit liquidity. But yeah, those are two decent ones. Manta is also another decent new coin, right? Th these new ones are decent that are VC backed. H bands. Yo, bro, can you show how to check for honey pots and rugs, please? So... <sighs> There, I mean, like on Dex tools, right? You can check the audits here and you can see some general information about it. The problem with these are, you know, a lot of the time when a token is new, I've seen it in the past where it'll say that the contract isn't verified or, or like it'll give you warnings, but they turn out to be untrue. So, I mean, the... I've gotten rugged a lot. I'm not perfect at, at finding rug pulls. I know there's some people out there on, who make videos on YouTube and they, they are, their claim to fame is like, oh, I've never been rug pulled. I mean, I'm, I'm an aggressive risk taker. I'm like Ponky, man. <laughs> so like, yeah, I'm not perfect. I, I get rugged from time to time as well. I, I got rugged recently on this stupid AI coin, CloudNet AI. And I kind of knew it was a rug when I bought it. I made the risk very clear in the Discord. And it did turn out to be a rug pull. Let's get this off my favorite list. But yeah, I mean, I'm not perfect. I get rug too. And you look for obvious things like, is the team anonymous? Uh, do they have a lot of audit warnings on their contract? Do they have taxes on their contract? Stuff like that. Is it a honeypot? Like, stuff like that coming up. I mean, your general tools like Dex, Dex tools can give you that information. You can also use, um, what was that tool called? d.fi you can use this tool the super app uh we can use something like this so i gotta log in So something like this, let's take, let's take bets because a lot of people, let's take Boda actually. We'll take Boda and plug it into this. This internet, man, it's driving me crazy. This is so annoying. The stream must be holding up my bandwidth. Uh, boat is only on coin market cap that's right getting trolled out here guys all right so we're going to take the boda contract and we're going to plug it in to d.fi we'll make sure that's correct 8be7 yep that's correct
so it's showing up as a wallet. We don't want a wallet. We want the coin. Let's try this. We're doing some live experimentation right now. We'll get back to the live stream in a moment. I haven't used this tool in a while. I just remember it's good for, for finding. I mean, it's the same data, though, as you'll get on Dex tools at the end of the day. Yeah, I don't know. This thing won't, Boda won't pop up. Here we go. I think we got to search it in the scanner. Base. Here we go. This is what we got to do. Let's see what comes up. So the problem is with all meme coins, they literally show this. <laughs> um, that's the problem with these tools that I've noticed. So I mean, the score is seventy-three out of a hundred. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> Every meme, like let's let's take an example now. Let's take bets. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, we'll take we'll try bets and plug it into the same tool. It's going to show the same same warnings most likely. Okay, so this one has a score of 67, so a less score than Boda. Same high-risk warnings. Every meme coin is going to have this. They literally all, they're all the same. I mean, let's take what, Brett? This is an interesting case study right now we're doing live. So Boda got 73. This got 67 out of 100. Let's see what Brett gets. Okay, Brett's got an 82. Private wallet owns significant percent. Okay, so Brett, Brett's got a higher score. Um, it's got nine points higher than Base Yoda. I'd imagine Base Yoda doesn't have that high of a score because it's just not as established as high as a market cap. Let's take, I don't know, I'll do one more before I move on from this question. I'll take a look at Mochi here, five months old. So that means it's pretty established and all these warnings should be out of the way. Let's see if it still does give warnings. 82 out of 100 score. Okay, so Mochi, 82 out of 100. Dump risk, high risk, same as all of our other memes. The fees charged transferring this token, that's not good. Uh, enables unique users to bypass restrictions. That's the team. But yeah, this one's six months old. You know, base yoda is a few weeks old. So the more established the contract is, I'm sure the higher rating it will give. But yeah, you can use a tool like D.5, but the problem is it's going to show the same warnings on every single coin that pops up. So it's not really like a, a good data source. Because everything is going to look like a rug pull if you use this, especially the early ones. Let's find something that like just launched. Um, I know I said one more, but uh, what just launched? Andy or Ski? This one, Ski is being promoted everywhere, right? Ski Mass Dog. Let's see what this one has. 73, which is the same score as Boda. And the same warning, 61 actually, so less score than Boda. It's, it's okay. So, I mean, it's somewhat accurate, but it's remember, Boda got 73, this got six, 61, Brett got like an 83, and Mochi got what, an 82. So, I think the longer a contract has been deployed, the higher rating it will get. You know, this is 13 days old, Boda is like 13 days old. So, yeah, you can use tools like this. 
not to get too carried away, but they don't really tell you at the end of the day. I mean, nothing. there's no perfect way to avoid rugs other than just not taking any risk and only going after really established projects that have raised money from from reputable venture capitalist firms and other, you know, backers. But, you know, if you're in the on-chain trenches, you're probably going to get caught on a few rugs. That's just the way it is. As long as you catch those winners that to pay for the losers, you'll be fine. Camilo saying, let's go Brett 2.0. Brett 2.0. I wish you guys the best of luck with that. Ski, DeFito on base, and Major on ETH. Nah, man, I don't know about that. This dude asked me the same question 10 times. Dude. Nick, how many $1 super chats did you give me, bro? Thank you for all the super chats. I appreciate it. And yeah, bets. I wish you all the best with bets. I'm not going to wait for that to load right now. Boda community going crazy in here. H bands with a nine ninety nine or the ninety nine euro super chat. Um, thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Don't sleep on Ponky. We already talked about Ponky. What do I think about Filecoin? It won't go back to two hundred. It can go to forty fifty, but it won't go to two hundred. See, so you can make money with it, but uh, don't expect a new all time high. H bands with another 250 euro super chat. I answered your question, bro. Target for exchange, few dollars at least. Community takeover, Brett 2.0. Thoughts on Conan Trump's dog? I wouldn't buy it now. I mean, if you buy it now, you will be used as exit liquidity. It's up hundreds of X's, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, still quite low at 22 mil. For some reason, I thought this was 200 mil. It's only 20 mil. Uh, but, you know, still. It's up 100x in 29 days. Could keep going, but I think this is a crash call. I think that's why it's pumping so hard. I mean, whatever crash is touching nowadays is going crazy to the upside. So you want to get into crash this call is when they're low. And obviously with Brett, we've learned that they can keep on pumping, even if you didn't buy the lows. But yeah, Conan... I would rather get this than Biden's dog, that's for sure. Right, why would I want to buy a token after Biden's dog? Have you ever heard about Gari Network? No, I have not heard about Gari Network. Crypto Krill says, you should look into the 800K for marketing for Polkadot's DED meme coin. There you go. Polkadot tried to launch a meme coin to get people onto the network because meme coins are a great way to onboard new users. That's what they're saying in their executive boardroom. And again, they funnel out $800,000 from the treasure, treasury uh, to market their meme coin. And um, Polkadot's just the biggest joke out there. I'm really behind on these comments right now. I'm like 40 minutes behind. There's no way I'll be able to catch up with all of them. I'm just going to try and find some live uh, super chats in case I missed any because I don't want to leave those people hanging. 
Uh, we got a two USD super chat from Dice Five saying, "Can you do TA ski on base?" Sure, I can do that. All right, not much to say here. It looks almost identical to the QCAT candle chart. What do I mean by that? Well, let me get my proper tools. So you have your initial pump, you have your sell off, reaccumulation. Now you're going for another breakout, retest, you want to see a push higher. I mean, it's looking pretty bullish right now. Can't deny that. A lot of base memes are looking like they're going to get some liquidity flowing into them. We're seeing a lot of them start to perform well. Again, Frentech airdrop coming next week. I don't know when the base airdrop will hit but I do expect it to be this year, sometime this year. But yeah, Ski Mask, Charlie looks bullish. Can't deny that. Your green zone, your green box is the buying area. And it's leaving that right now. Can you revisit the fishy thing with Brett? Uh, that's token sniffer. I don't know if it's going to work today. No guarantees because I'm using a ton of bandwidth to live stream anyway. Even though this you know new MacBook Pro should be able to handle the bandwidth, got the M2 Max chip and a lot of RAM should be able to handle it. But we'll try again. No, it's not working. I don't know. I'll pull it up before the stream next time so I can actually show it. But this dude says, why do you fade Toshi? E? Such an obvious play after Toshi. What? <laughs> Everyone searching to swap Toshi will find Toshi. I'm ignoring. That's the dumbest comment I've seen all day, man. You're you might be redacted. Caspa, <clears throat> Toshi -E instead of Toshi. That one caught me off guard for how dumb it was, really. Caspa's looking good. I mean, it's been in this multi. This is from November. It got into this range November, mid November. So, just to give you an accurate measurement, you know, we're talking. We're talking 159 days of sideways at this point. That's a lot of days. That's over five months, approaching six months. And we're holding the 200 daily EMA. It finally caught up. If you guys remember, for Caspa, before it broke out above five cents, I was basically saying I wanted to come down to your 200 daily EMA. And I was going to use that as my buy price. But I noticed how it just wasn't going back down to the 200 daily EMA. So I ended up buying it, you know, between four and a half and five cents in this little pocket here in this green box I have on the chart. But over here now, notice it finally caught up to the daily 200 EMA. And if we're still in a bull market, which I think we are, you know, this is marking a very oversold level. It's basically back to the mean now. Um, so if it does dip below it, that's probably going to be an amazing buying opportunity. And I expect the next leg up after that. But yeah, it's interesting to see how it finally caught up to the daily 200 EMA, which I was waiting so eagerly for back over here in October, September last year. Never gave it back then, so I was forced to buy in. And I'm glad I did sell a lot of my old junk coins like Litecoin, Monero, uh, a lot of Bitcoin and ETH into Caspa. And it paid off not waiting for the 200 EMA because if I did wait for that to hit, I would be buying it up here at 11 cents. So anyways, yeah, it's looking good. 159 day range. And ideally it will break out higher, but maybe it dips to say 10 cents. You get a better entry. 
Austin Craig Land says, thank you, brother. I appreciate your opinion as always. No problem. Silva Dalla saying, welcome to the live. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Yes, sir. Hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button. Thoughts on Epic Prime? I'm still bullish from the last time I talked about it, which was yesterday. My opinion hasn't changed. I'm bullish. John Valentine says he uses D.5 too. Is exchange still a buy? My opinion hasn't changed from yesterday. My last live stream and one day ago, I was bullish then. I'm still bullish now. Oh, John Valentine's a pro. Yeah, we, we figured it out, John. We figured out Scanner. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. If you own Ton Wallet, how can you be accessed in the US? I have no idea, man. I have left the US for the time being. Crypto Middle East and Africa with a super chat saying, Fetch price prediction, my man. Fet. Man, I gotta I gotta buy some more RAM. This is ridiculous how long it's taken to load these pages. Anyway, Fed right now, $2.5 billion market cap. Let's take a look at the chart. The real interesting one is actually the Fed Bitcoin chart. Right, this is the really interesting one. All right, because... This is a, a four year long accumulation, 1700 days, four or five years basically. And now it's breaking out obviously because AI is the, AI is the meta, AI is the best narrative in the market. Now, if this thing is going to make a new all time high versus Bitcoin, where can it go? Well, to that high, you're looking at another 278%. Meanwhile, off of the bottom, it's already up 905, eight, call it 900% from the bottom. You know, another 3X, you're looking at a 30X versus Bitcoin. That means you can flip. If you bought this bottom down here in late 2022, you would be flipping one Bitcoin into 30 Bitcoin if it just reaches the all time high. Um, and yeah, obviously it's going to be different versus the US dollar, right? This is the Bitcoin versus Fed chart or the Fed versus Bitcoin chart, but there's there's a lot of upside here. There's a lot of upside here. In terms of price prediction in dollars. I've always said 5 to 10 for Fed. You know, even the last bull run, I was saying 5 to 10 dollars for Fed in 2021. And you know it's not going to happen till this cycle, but yeah, I'm I'm just going to stick with what I've always said: five to ten bucks. You can go watch. Uh, let's see. Fet two years ago I had a stake one year ago. Two years ago, yeah, two years ago. So I made a lot, a, a few Fed videos, you know, in the last cycle, and uh, my price prediction. Go watch it. Price prediction video. Obviously, my timing was off, but I think the price prediction will come to fruition. Five to ten bucks. This guy Lazio says the fact is that we need to take a good look at the current situation. There will be a lot of robberies in the coming period. Yeah, like Polkadot, I assume you're talking about a lot of those. What do I think of the Fed merger? I don't know if it's necessary, but they're doing it. 
Expendable Youth saying that's what's up. What up, Expendable Youth? Shout out to Kylo. See you later, brother. Uh, let's see. Michael Scruggs says, hi, Connor. Still bullish on Rose. Or maybe the better question is, are there other coins you'd rather hold in Rose for the cycle? I would rather hold Cubic, you know, as a layer one with AI integrated into it. But yeah, Rose is also good. I do think Rose will perform well. Back to 10 cents. I mean, yeah, it's, the thing is, again, like I was saying with render, it's rare that a coin has multiple good cycles. Rose could be a winner. Um, but, you know, render's been performing a lot better than Rose up to this point. So, yeah, it's, I think you'll do okay with Rose. But there's too much prior history, too much bag holders, too much VCs. And that's why this chart dumped so aggressively over the past five, six weeks. There's just too much selling pressure. So I would look for a new coin, Cubic Tau, um, even Render, Echelon Prime, AGI, AI Tech. They're all going to be better AI coins than Rose because they're all new and they haven't experienced the cycle before other than Render. Jay Silva says, we're only at 80 likes. Is that true? Is that true? We're only likes we're at 78 likes all right so that's pathetic 153 people watching and 78 likes and i've been live for an hour and a half that is absolutely pathetic um i'll see you guys another time we're gonna wrap up this stream now i'm very disappointed in the live audience today 78 likes 150 viewers and i've been going live for an hour and a half i'm slightly insulted but it is what it is. It's all right, guys. I'll see you in the next uh, video. Um, and it is time to wrap it up anyway. But I would appreciate it if you liked the live stream, being that I am giving my time and energy here. And, um, you know, you guys asked me a ton of questions. But anyways, I appreciate all of your support regardless. But it's time for me to go this time. Hope you enjoyed the live stream. Smash up the like button for your boy, please. Boost the engagement on the channel organically. Right, I won't be like poking on and, and boost my video views and stuff like that, like the Kusumarian. I'm going to do it all the legit way. So I would appreciate it if you guys help me by hitting the like button at the very least. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the stream. My name is Connor from Crypto Empire. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day wherever you are in the world.